days ago. It is written in poetry form, but reads very much just like a, a young adult book. Nicknames. Most people just call me Sophie, which is the name on my birth certificate, or Soph, or sometimes Sofa. <laughs> Zach and Danny think it's cute to call me Couch, as in, how are your cushions doing today, Couch? My parents usually call me Sophie Dophy or So-So, and Rachel and Grace call me Fifi, or sometimes just Fee. But Dylan calls me Sapphire. He says it's because of my eyes. I love the way his voice sounds when he says it. Sapphire. I like whispering it to myself. His name for me. Sapphire. It's like the secret password to my heart. How it happened. After Zach's party, Rachel's big sister came to drive a bunch of us home with her friend and her friend's younger brother. I was the last one to get in the car, and it turned out all the other laps were taken. So I had to sit on Rachel's sister's friend's brother's lap. It was Dylan's lap. But even though he goes to my school, I'd never seen him before. And he had such smoldery dark eyes that I felt like I'd been zapped smack into the middle of some R-rated movie. And everyone else in the car was just going to fade away, and this guy and I were going to start making out right then and there without ever having said one word to each other. But what really happened was he blushed and said, Hi, I'm Dylan. And I blushed back and said, I'm Sophie. After that, we didn't say anything else. But our bodies seemed to be carrying on a conversation of their own, leaning together into every curve of the road, sharing skin secrets. And just before we got to my house, I thought I felt him give my waist an almost squeeze. Then the car rolled to a stop and I climbed out with my whole body buzzing. When our eyes connected, this miracle smile lit up his face, and I practically had a religious experience. <laughs> then I went upstairs to bed and tried to fall asleep, but I felt permanently wide awake, and I kept on seeing that smile of his and feeling that almost squeeze in the girl's bathroom. Is he a good kisser, Rachel asks. Unbelievable, I say. And it's true. Dylan's kisses seem like something much better than kissing. It's like I can feel them with my whole body. That never used to happen when Lee kissed me. And he's the only other boy I ever made out with. Has he tried to get to second base, Grace wants to know. But the bell rings just in time. It's been Rachel, Grace, and me ever since when third grade had barely begun and we were just getting to know each other. That September afternoon when we saw four older girls pedaling toward us, we didn't expect them to stop or to leap off their bikes and suddenly surround us, but they did. And we had no idea that the biggest one, Mary Beth Butler, with those little glinting glit slits for eyes, would ask Rachel what church she belonged to. <coughs> that September afternoon after Rachel mumbled, St. James's, we didn't know that Mary Beth would ask Grace the same question, or that Grace would squeak out, North Prospect, and it's none of your business. But she did. And when Mary Beth asked me the question, and I said I didn't go to church because I was Jewish, I didn't think she'd start shouting at Rachel and Grace. Don't you know you aren't supposed to play with anyone who doesn't go to church? While her friends glared and tightened their circle around us. That September afternoon, when Rachel kicked Mary Beth in the shin and the three of us crashed through the cage of bikes racing off together across the nearest lawn, scrambling through the hedge and into the alley, not stopping till we were locked safely behind the heavy oak of Rachel's front door. We didn't know that we'd just become best friends, but we had. Watching Murphy during art class, he is so homely, he's downright ugly. So ugly that none of the girls even think about him. He's too lowly, too pitiful to even bother making fun of. So something must be very wrong with me because I want to kiss him. I want to kiss him real bad. Even though his nose is crooked and his ears are huge, even though his hair's a mess and his lips are tight and scared, I want to kiss away those circles under his eyes that make him look like he's never slept a second in his life. When no one was looking, I'd walk up to him and say, Hey Murph, would it be okay if I kissed you? 
I'd touch his shoulder and look, him, and look at him with gentle, misty, moody eyes and say, come on, I mean it. I really want to. And he'd look dumbstruck, and all the gray would fade out of his eyes, and this light would come into them. And he'd wrap his skinniness around me, and his arms would be shaking, and suddenly I'd feel all this love, all this need pouring into me, right through his lips into me, and it would feel great. And I'd close my eyes to feel it better. Whoa. I can't believe I'm having this fantasy about Murphy, when I'm so totally in love with Dylan. Every day when I get home from school, I find televisions on in the living room, the family room, the kitchen, and each of the bedrooms. There's even a little teeny one on in the bathroom. My mother says it's so she won't miss anything when she's going around sweeping and dusting and putting away laundry and emptying out waste baskets and cooking, which is what she does all day long, except for when she's lying in bed watching television. That's where she is every afternoon when I get home from school. She glances up and says hello, then goes back to watching. I walk from room to room, switching off all the other sets, wishing she would show half as much interest in my life as she does in Luke and Laura's. Her soaps. My mother says they keep her company, but it's just the opposite for me. Listening to that music that swells up in the background whenever someone announces they're pregnant or dies of a drug overdose or maybe finds out their husband is having an affair with their best friend's stepsister's daughter-in-law makes me feel lonelier than when I was little. And my mother used to make me wait for her in the car while she did her errands. I used to be so scared that the car would roll away, so scared that my mother would never come back. Sometimes when she's watching her soaps, it feels like she never did. Maybe Dad loves me, but it's sure hard to tell. I don't think he's ever hugged me or kissed me in his life. Sometimes I hug him, but he doesn't hug me back. His body goes all stiff, almost like he's scared of being touched. Sometimes he jokes around by putting his palms on my cheeks, then leaning in and kissing the back of each of his hands. When I was real little, he used to hold his long arm out straight and put his hand on my forehead. Then he challenged me to try to reach his body with my short arms. And of course I never could. He seemed to think this was a riot, and I used to laugh right along with him. But secretly, I wished he could cut out the stupid game and hold me. Dad's not that way, though. Even before they started fighting, I never saw him touch Mom not even to hold her hand. Maybe it's hereditary or something. I sure hope not. I sure hope I'm not going to be like that. But judging from how hard it is for me to keep my hands off Dylan, I seriously doubt it. Mom and Dad used to be in love. Way back in the beginning, anyhow. I know because I can see it in their eyes when I watch the old home videos of when I was a baby. But now they have these hideous battles all the time. They scream their guts out at each other about things like how they should be raising me or about money or the in-laws or even just what movie to go see. Their shrieking whips around inside of me like a tornado and no fingers crammed in my ears, no pillows held over my head can block it out. It makes me want to throw on my coat and rush over to Rachel's or to Grace's but I can't bring myself to set foot outside. What would I do if I ran into one of the neighbors? A neighbor who's heard every single foul mouth word. Walking home from school with Rachel and Grace. Listening to Grace moan about how horny she is and about how if she doesn't find a boyfriend soon, she's going to die of lack of nookie disease. And Rachel complained about how Danny can't take her out on Saturday night because his parents have grounded him again. I see Murphy trudging along up ahead, looking so immensely alone that I have to fight the urge to run to catch up to him and fill that huge empty space by his side. I'd never be able to explain a move like that to Rachel and Grace.
on the way to meeting Dylan's mother. I'm thinking about the time my mother and I were in the car, waiting for an old lady who was taking forever to pull out of a parking space in front of flare cleaners. I'm thinking about how when she finally drove off, this crow-faced man zipped right into the space from behind us, and about how my mother rolled down her window and said, excuse me, sir, but we've been waiting for that spot for five minutes. I'm remembering what the man said as he shoved open his door. Goddamn kikes. I'm remembering the look on my mother's face, the way her hand flew up to her cheek as though she'd been slapped. And I'm remembering the first thought that came into my head. Do we look that Jewish? It's just an expression. Dylan's mother is in the middle of having a garage sale when we walk up. She kisses him on the cheek and then starts pumping my hand, saying how delighted she is to finally be meeting me. She says she only wishes we'd been here this morning because she could have used our help when the huge crowd of early birds descended. She says they were swarming all over her stuff like flies, and everyone kept trying to jew her down on the prices. I glance over at Dylan to see his reaction to what she said. He just laughs and says, that's how people are at garage sales, Mom. I don't know which is worse, the fact that she said it or the fact that it didn't even phase him. The meaning of Murphy. I don't know how it got started, but it happens all the time. When someone at school acts like a dork, the other kids say, what a Murphy. Someone will do something dumb, like today in science class when Danny knocked a beaker onto the floor and it crashed into a zillion pieces. Zach shouted, jeez, Danny, don't be such a Murphy. And the whole class burst out laughing. Okay, I laughed too, but only so no one would think I was strange. I wonder how Murphy would feel if he knew his name had become synonymous with jerk. I guess I know how he'd feel. A visit to the Museum of Fine Arts. I head straight upstairs to the Impressionist Gallery to see my favorite painting. I sit down on the oak bench, gaze up at the life-size dancing couple, and let my slough slip through the gilded frame right into Renoir's so soft world. I want to be that woman in the long white dress waltzing in the arms of that red-headed man. I want to feel the heat of his hand holding mine and press my cheek to the fur of his beard. But suddenly, Sophie, someone is saying my name. Sophie? Asking it like a question and I'm wrenched from the painting and snapped back to the reality of the hard oak bench. There's someone sitting next to me, speaking to me. How you doing? It's Murphy. Murphy? And he looks so happy to see me, his tail's practically wagging. Oh, hi, I say, trying to sound friendly, but wishing I could get the heck out of here. It's an awesome painting, isn't it, he says. Yeah, I say, my all-time favorite, he says. Mine, too, I admit. What have I done? Oh, no, tell me that I didn't do what I think I just did. I didn't ask Murphy to have lunch with me just now, did I? Man, oh, man, a shove. It's lunch with Murphy in a public place. This is going to be totally Twilight Zone. When Murphy introduces me to his parents, his father takes both of my hands in his and beams at me with the warmest eyes. They're Murphy's eyes. He says, thank goodness you're here to help us. The first thing Murphy's mother says after hello, and it's so good to meet you, is, my son tells me you're Jewish. That's right, I say, while all the blood in my entire body rushes to my face. But then she says, I am too. With the nicest, most welcoming smile. It's Murphy's smile. I used to have the worst Christmas tree envy, she says. That's probably one of the reasons I married my husband, so I'd finally get to have a tree of my own. 